What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you guys that are new here, my name is Luigi Gonzalez and I'm a first year medical student studying in Southern California. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing another rendition where I've done two previous videos where I answered medical quizzes online, either Buzzfeed or other websites. So for today, we're going to be doing part three of that and hopefully we'll actually get a perfect score this time because I feel like I haven't been able to get a single perfect score so far. And that really bothers me, you know, just being a perfectionist, but we'll see what we can do today. So let's get right into it. All right, so for our first quiz today, it's titled only a medical expert can score over 14 out of 17 on this quiz. And again, as I've done with my previous videos, if you want to take the quiz, the link is going to be in the description down below. So yeah, every time it's a title like that, that just, it really bothers me, you know, like the other one that I've taken where it said that Oh, if you've got, if you can get 25 out of 30 on this quiz, then you must be a medical student. That just adds that pressure of like, oh man, what if I get less than 25? It's gonna make me have this imposter syndrome. Like, should I be a medical student? But it's just an online quiz, you know? So definitely shouldn't have be any pressure, but just me being competitive and me being kind of like perfectionist, that's just how I am. But yeah, let's get it started. Okay, so how much random medical history do you know? Are you telling me this whole quiz is just about medical history? Cause I have no clue. Oh boy. Okay, this is gonna be a rough quiz. What was it? 14 out of 17? Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get that. Okay, who is known as the father of Western medicine? Well, let's see. Aristotle, Hippocrates, Freud, Socrates, Isaac Newton. So these are all like big name people. We can cross off Newton. We can cross off Freud, because Newton is more physics, Freud is more psych. Aristotle, Socrates, I think it's Hippocrates, Hippocrates, just because of the Hippocratic Oath, you know? So I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, let's go. Okay, correct. Hippocrates, born in Greek, 460 BC, first physician, uh-huh. He experiment. oh, I didn't know he experimented, like, and he used aspirin all the way back in 460 BC. Wow. Well, that's, that's actually pretty wild. That's a long time ago. What did he, the answer to question one, write to, oh yeah. So as I mentioned, the Hippocratic Oath, which is, it's not a diagnostic manual for diabetes, guide to delivering babies, no. Oath for new doctors, yep. And a recipe for sedatives, nope, yep, there we go. All right, Hippocratic Oath, mm -hmm. do no harm, treat to one's best ability, respect patient privacy, so it's basically setting the ethical standards for a new physician. All right, number three, what are the four humors according to humoral medicine? Okay, why is it, oh, this is the wrong quiz to be taking. I'm so bad with all these like, history. I remember taking a class in college that kind of talked about the history of medicine. Um, okay, sick, healthy, old and young, I don't think so. Blood, feces, I think. I think it's the, the biles and phlegm. That's what I remember. I don't think it's mind, body, soul, and spirit. Let's go. Okay, humoral medicine. Because I knew humoral medicine was just about like different colored liquids or something that could be coming out of a person. Yeah. Imbalance in the humors. So that's why they did bloodletting and purging. Yeah, that was a wild time. Okay, who published the first modern anatomical drawings of the human body? Bruh. Okay. Galileo, Hippocrates, Leonardo DiCaprio. What? I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like Da Vinci. Uh, Andreas Vesalius, Hildegard of Bingen. Wow. Yeah, this is tough. One. Would it be Hippocrates? I don't think Hippocrates did it. I don't think so. I don't know if they did dissections like that. So I think it'll have to be later on. I want to go with Vesalius. Wow. Let's go. See, sometimes like guessing, you can you can go pretty far with just guessing. Andreas Vesalius. So who was this guy? Belgian physician who lived in the 16th century. Okay, famous for creating anatomical drawings. Yeah, could be, see, as I said, like they did dissections later on, and they didn't do dissections like in the beginning of medical history. Edward Jenner created the world's first vaccine for which disease? I don't know who, who Edward Jenner is. Uh, TB, I don't know. I don't know. Polio, hepatitis, influenza. 
Well, looking at this picture, this picture looks like very, very old. He's dressed like 1700s. So I want to say like smallpox. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. 1700s, late 18th century. There we go. See, so sometimes you just got to pick up from the context clues. It's like that test taking skill that like you need to develop to just do well in your test, even though sometimes you might not know like what the actual answer is. Okay, so 1796, that's when he observed the dairy maids, cowpox, and they were immune to smallpox. So then he used them. Okay, yeah, I, I think I kind of remember that story now. It's just his name that I don't really remember. And then what's next? The first successful anti-malarial drug was discovered in the bark of the... Okay, I was asking about trees. What the heck is this? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with the cinchona tree or the jacaranda tree. Oh my God, oh my. I'm on a roll like with all these guesses. This is actually pretty crazy. Okay, well, it's good to know that it came from that tree. But I don't know how that will, that knowledge is more than just like a, fun, a random fun fact. What is Grey's Anatomy? So it's a television show, but I also know that it's like a medical textbook. Wait, so which one would it be? I think Grey's Anatomy is with an E in the show. So this one might be the textbook. Yeah, okay. Yeah, see, I was right. Grey's Anatomy, the popular TV show has an E. Okay, perfect. Sailors and pirates in the 1700s used to suffer from scurvy and a deficiency in vitamin C. Let's see what it says. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, vitamin A, drinking salt water, motion sickness, so it's definitely vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Which of the following diseases killed the most people in the 20th century? Okay, I remember seeing this picture, like all of the textbooks, all of the classes that you're gonna take. Whenever you talk about medical history, you're gonna see this picture. And it's from the Spanish flu, I believe. Oh, this would be so embarrassing if I was wrong, but yeah, see, I remember that picture is everywhere. I always see this picture. Polio, Ebola, yellow fever, and measles also killed a lot of people, but the Spanish flu pandemic was the deadliest. 500 million people. Wow, that's 30% of the world's population that was killed. Or not, not was killed, but was like infected at one point. That's actually a really large amount. All right, Jon Snow. Okay, I recently just learned this. The first epidemiologist traced outbreaks of... Oh man, why do I not know? I literally just learned this using like the water pipes. Was it polio, cholera, Ebola, tuberculosis, malaria? I don't think it was malaria. I don't think it was TB. I think it was Ebola. No, it was cholera. Oh my God. I literally just learned this two weeks ago. Dang it, it's always like, oh. uh-huh, cholera is an infectious disease, yeah. So I think the story goes where um, it was through like a water system that it was spreading through and he was the one that found out that if people drank from like this water spout instead of this one, then the people here are getting sick. So he traced like that pipe and then found out that it is spreading through the water because only people who were kind of drinking water and was getting water through that pipeline those were the only people getting infected whereas this other pipe that was just like two blocks in a different direction with a different system wasn't infecting anybody all right which of the following diseases has been successfully eradicated smallpox in the infamous tuskegee study observed untreated i think it was syphilis yeah so that's just another like famous kind of like medical controversy in history just because you know like of the mistreatment during the uh tuskegee study so yeah that's definitely um like a famous topic that's also very talked about in any kind of medical history joseph lister introduced the principle of so whenever i think of joseph lister i'm pretty sure he's the guy that listerine was named after so i'm pretty sure it's about like cleaning yeah anti-sepsis uh-huh let me see if they mention anything about listerine here yeah, no, they didn't mention this thing, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's named after. Okay, who created the vaccines for rabies and anthrax? Oh, okay, this is going to be a complete guess because I have no clue. So in one of my previous quizzes, I remember getting Alexander Fleming wrong because he's the one that discovered penicillin. 
I want to go with Pasteur sounds like a familiar name. The other two don't really sound familiar to me. Roger Bacon and William Harvey. So I want to go with Pasteur. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Pasteur's famous experiments provide proved that there's a relationship between germs and disease. That was back in 1860 to 1880. Yeah, and then, okay, perfect. Florence Nightingale was the founder of modern I want to say nursing because I know there's this kind of like in psych I learned this thing called like the nightingale effect where I don't know if it's the the caretaker falls in love with whoever they're taking care of or if it was the opposite I think it's the caretaker falling in love with who they're taking care of yeah uh, I don't know if it mentions that here, but you guys should look it up. There's like a night nightingale effect. I think is what it's called All right, who was the first who what was first used for anesthesia during surgery? Is, it, is alcohol one of these options? Yeah, whiskey Ooh. Um, during surgery. I kind of want to just pick whiskey because I'm pretty sure that's what they did Nitrous oxide I think is what they use now like that's supposed to be the laughing gas um, Ether Hmm I'm just gonna go with whiskey. Let's see what happens. Oh, it was ether. Dang it. Okay, so ether was the first anesthetic up until the mid 1800s. Doctors did not use anesthesia. Yikes. Conscious and an excruciating pain. Yeah, that just sounds terrible. But it says here they experimented with alcohol, opium, and chloroform. Oh, okay, okay. So they're asking specifically like what made them unconscious. Okay, well, now we know. All right, when was the first when was insulin first used to treat type 1 diabetes yikes uh again this is gonna be like a complete guess i feel like hmm okay so insulin insulin how old would insulin be i want to say 1922 i feel like that's the most i think it should be in the 1900s i don't know if 1800s they had insulin back then yeah see 1922 all right, insulin was first used to treat diabetes in 1922. Frederick Banting, new diabetics, uh-huh. Okay. Wow, yeah. All right, perfect. So we got 15 out of 17, so we passed that 14 point mark. So we passed medical history. So now let's move on to our next test. All right, so our next test is titled, can, can you successfully impersonate a doctor without going to jail? That, that sounds very sus, but okay. Okay, let's just do it. So let's imagine for a moment that you are a big old criminal. Yeah. You decide that for your next crime, you are going to sneak into a hospital and pretend to be a doctor for a day. I highly do not recommend doing that. Can you pull off the scam without getting arrested? Try your best to answer the following medical questions, but be warned, one wrong answer and you're headed straight to jail. Okay, so we have to get perfect on this. All right, here we go. Doctor, what is that thing around your neck? What is that thing? I don't know what that is. Is that a stethoscope, a periscope, or a kaleidoscope? I'm gonna say stethoscope. All right. Doctor, what is that thing you're sticking in the patient's mouth? A saliva collector, tongue depressor, or a mouth kebab? Mouth kebab does not sound like a good option there. Saliva collector, eh, it just looks like a wooden stick. So I'm gonna say tongue depressor. Stop with these pop-ups. Okay. Excuse me, doctor. What is the average body temperature? We knew that it was 98.6. Doctor, what does rice stand for? Rest, ice, caution, exercise. That makes sense. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. That also makes sense. Rest, ice, compassion, and empathy. Wow, that's so sweet. But I think it's going to have to be the second one. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Okay. How long does it take to become a doctor in the United States? Oh, this is just such a sad question. Four years of medical school and then at least three years of res in residency. Okay. Three years of medical school and then a one year residency. Ha, I wish. Uh, it's just three weeks summer program, then bam, you're a doctor. Oh my God. That, that would just be such a nightmare. And like nobody's gonna know what they're doing. So it's gonna have to be four years of medical school and then three years of residency if you're doing internal medicine. But if you're doing other like you can subspecialize in there further, like cardiology, which would be another three extra years. Or if you're doing general surgery, it's four years of medical school, and then five years of residency for surgery. And then again, you can subspecialize after that. So there's all these varieties for how long you're gonna be spending. 
in order to become the kind of doctor that you want to be. Doctor, which one of these organs is functionally useless? So I think in, was it in my first video or my second video where it asked, which one of these is a vestigial organ, which is basically an organ that's a remnant from our ancestors that we no longer use now. And for sure we use the kidneys, for sure we use the liver, but it's the appendix that's not as useful right now. That's why sometimes you can remove your appendix just because it's causing pain and it's not really gonna affect any of like your bodily, you know, like functions. What the heck is a femur? So the femur is the thigh bone and it's the largest bone in the body. Doctor, quick, which of these is not a blood type? O negative, A positive, B negative. Yeah, so the only blood types are A, B, A, B, and O. And then any of those four could be positive or negative. So D negative is not a blood type. Hey doc, Tylenol is a brand name version of what medication? Oh, pharmacology, okay. So ranitidine, loratadine, acetaminophen, acetaminophen. I don't even know what the other two are. I'm a first year medical student right now and pharmacology is going to be taught in my second year. So for now, I have no clue what those other two are. Doctor, what, this patient is having heart issues. What kind of specialist do we need? Oncologist, cardiologist, or nephrologist? So an oncologist is a doctor that treats cancer and I've actually interacted with oncologists before. If you guys check out my channel, I have a series of videos where I talked about my story with cancer. So if you guys want to check that out, the link is going to be somewhere up there. Um, a cardiologist, well, honestly, like while I had cancer, I also had to meet with a cardiologist and I'm still seeing a cardiologist now to check on my heart health because of my chemo back then. Um, so I know for sure that if you have heart issues, you see a cardiologist and nephrologist is just for the kidneys. All right, yo doc, what do you call the vertebrae on your neck? Okay, so I think this was also answered in other quizzes that I've taken. If you go from an order from top to bottom, you have the cervical, which is kind of like seven vertebrae around your neck. Then you have the thoracic, which makes like the spine, like the big spine on your back when you're um, kind of like hunched. And then you have the lumbar, which is for your lower back. And then below that, you have your sacrum, and then your coccyx is kind of like your small tailbone. So if this one's on your neck, then it's cervical. And then which of the following rules always applies when you're getting an MRI? Ooh, this one might be tough. Like, I'm honestly not too familiar with what you need to do beforehand. I just know that for most imaging, well, MRI is ma magnetic resonance imaging. So you're using magnets. So I'm guessing you can't have any metal. I don't know if like, you can't eat eight hours before getting the scan. That might also be a thing because I know for sure like a lot of patients when they're in the hospital, they're NPO, um, which means that they're not allowed to eat just because they might have a surgery or a procedure coming up or also some imaging, I believe also doesn't let you eat. But I'm not sure if MRI is one of them. You must be put under anesthesia. I don't think so. I think it's metal. I think it's metal just because it's magnetic. Wait, what does MRI even stand for? Hey, let's go. We predicted that question. So MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging, which is what we mentioned. And if the patient has a pulmonary lobectomy, where did they have the surgery? So a pulmonary lobectomy, a lobectomy, whenever it ends in like ectomy, I believe it's like you're removing it. And then lobe, you're removing a lobe. And then pulmonary is about the lungs, which is the main kind of question that they're asking is where did they have the surgery? So that's in their lungs because you can also have a lobectomy in your brain, I believe, which is what they did back then, where they just, it's a whole like, complicated story. I believe the story of Phineas Gage is the main example of like, oh no, that's called the lobotomy for the brain. So lobectomy is removing a lobe and then pulmonary is in the lungs. All right, which one of these is not an antibiotic? Oh, I still have not taken pharmacology. Okay, azithromycin, tetracycline, Alprazolam. Oh, this is tough. Okay, I think azithromycin for sure, I think, is an antibiotic. So now I'm guessing between the two. Because for a lot of like pharmacology, a lot of it, you can kind of tell what it is based off of the name, the ending of the name. So I'm going to go with Alprazolam. And which of these is a gland? So I think a gland. Oh man, this was like my first month of medical school. What is a gland? The pancreas, the spleen, 
the larynx. So I think it's the pancreas because it releases hormones. And then how many bones do we have? About 206. And then, um, let's see. Which of these diseases is actually a totally made up word I invented to trick you? What kind of a question is this? A beta lipoproteinemia, phenylketonemia, spatulo. Hmm. Okay, so um, my camera recording just got stopped because my SD card was full, but you're gonna have to take my word for this, that the right answer to that last question. Which of these diseases is actually a totally made up word I invented to trick you? So it says here that it's spatulodoxin hydronia. That's the correct answer. That's a completely made up word. My first choice actually was a beta lipoproteinemia, but apparently that's a real word. So now we got everything right. Congratulations, you have successfully impersonated a doctor. You may have committed a very serious crime, but at least you didn't get caught. Well done. Yeah, very unrealistic. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get way more complicated questions when you're like actually walking around in the hospital. So I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that one, but so far I think we did pretty well on both of our quizzes today. Okay, and with that said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys really enjoyed these quizzes, make sure to hit that like button down below and let me know in the comments if you were able to get any of the questions that I got wrong correct. So with that said, if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.